Well, hello everyone. It is almost the middle of the Advent season already. And like everything else, it seems to be passing by just amazingly fast. Everything else seems to be just going uh, along as quickly as possible. And so here we are already in the middle of Advent. The texts of Advent, of course, focus on Jesus' uh, preparation for Jesus coming again in glory. And then as Advent goes along, we hear more about the actual preparation for the birth of Jesus and the leading up to the celebration of the birth itself. You know, on December 6th, we celebrated Nicholas. He was the Bishop of Myra in about the 4th century CE. He, of course, was a legendary figure, a popular figure, who in time became associated with the giving of gifts. He is known especially for his care and giving of gifts and caring for people, uh, along with the legend of giving a dowry for three young girls to avoid a terrible fate that they might have ha had had they not had that dowry. And of course, we then associate Nicholas with uh, the event that we know and celebrate his life. On that day, many people, like my family, uh, give little gifts during that time. And they're gifts that might uh, remind us of the generosity and care of Nicholas. So we did that in our home this past Saturday. Now then on December 13th, we have another day that we celebrate, especially in the Scandinavian countries, people remember Lucia. So it's St. Lucia's Day. And on that day, remembering Lucy, who uh, grew up in Italy and was a person who gave all her wealth uh, in order to care for the poor and the oppressed, uh, she is remembered since her name means light as the season of light, since at that time, the winter solstice was celebrated on December 13th. So we think of her especially on that day. In our family, we will have little saffron buns, call them Lucia buns, and we'll celebrate that day in other ways as well. Uh, and of course, in Sweden and Norway, uh, younger children are encouraged to wake up early and get those saffron buns ready and hot coffee and bring them up to their parents who are yet asleep as they sing the song of Santa Lucia. Um, you think that's working in our household? Well, dream on a little bit, but we do celebrate the day anyway. And of course, now during the season of Advent, the, the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament is especially important. And Isaiah, for the lesson that we read um, for this third Sunday in Advent, is again a text of people who are coming out and preparing to uh, leave a state of exile, uh, of being really imprisoned in another land, and losing their homeland and their temple destroyed and the city of Jerusalem destroyed. So they're people who are truly in a state of, of loss and grief. The lesson is an important one, and you'll probably even recognize this words, these words often used again uh, as a tune to hymns or songs for hymns. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. 
They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities. The devastation of many generations. I especially love the phrase, He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted. I was talking with someone recently who had just lost a beloved pet of many years to cancer. And she was just devastated. She said to me, my heart is broken, but I'll be okay. And I thought again of this text, what it means to have a broken heart. And I'm sure that many of you, like me, know what it means to have a broken heart. To feel that sense of complete loss when you have just been devastated. And I think of what it means to have your heart bound up again. You know, when that heart was whole and then of course it's torn apart. We feel it deeply. Well, during the season of Advent, getting ready for Christmas, you also know, I think, that scotch tape is having a moment. Yeah, we use a lot of this stuff. I know in our household, yards and yards of it go out wrapping presents and getting ready for things to ship other places. And I was thinking of that heart. And of course, we could pretty easily take that scotch tape and put that heart back together again. But I think probably like you, we need more than scotch tape. We really need God to enter into our lives and bring restoration. When that young person said to me, my heart is broken, but I'll be okay. I hope that she was going to rely on God's restoration, even in the midst of a broken heart. And that's what God has promised to do for us. God has promised to come and be with us in the midst of a broken heart, to bind up the broken heart, but also then, God says in Isaiah, that he's come to bring release to the captive, to mourn, comfort those who mourn, to provide relief for the oppressed. That spirit of the Lord is upon me. So during this season of Lent, it is a time to ask God again, to relieve us, to bind up our broken heart because God knows what it means that our heart is broken and knows what it means to come and give us comfort and to bind that broken, broken heart again. We have good news and that is Advent. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, you know where we are today. You know our needs. You know our cries to you. You know our broken hearts. Help us to recognize you as you come to us and join in our pain, but yet promise life and hope as we celebrate your birth and wait for your coming again in glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's peace to you this day.